In today's video, we're going to teach you how to play the classic Skyboat song. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking that bell icon to be notified of when I post new videos. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. In the description below, there's a link to the PDF document I have right here, so go ahead, put that on a tablet, print it out, have it in front of you so you can follow along. Ah, the Skyboat song, another classic tune to be adding to our repertoire as we build our tunes up to the point where we will have 10 to 12 tunes memorized and ready so we can transition to the Highland Pipes. Many folks know this tune as the theme song to the show Outlander. Some great pipe music in that show, so if you haven't checked it out, uh, it's not for the kids, but it is a pretty fascinating show with some good piping in it. But anyways, the Skyboat song. Let's talk about this. You can see, relatively straightforward tune. There are only four discrete phrases in it and one final ending phrase that's basically just the second phrase again, ending on a different note. But this tune has quite a lot going on in it. We have D throws, high A doublings, tar lewis, burls, F doublings, E doublings, even a D doubling right here. Wow. So it's got a little bit of everything, but don't worry. We're going to talk about all of this stuff. And there's also links in the description below to videos on all these bits of technique. So check that out and make sure that you are ready with all the technique and that you've already kind of got in under your fingers a little bit before diving into this tune. And also note this is in 6-8 time. This tune and another tune, the Athel Highlanders, are both covered in a counting video that's linked right up here and again in the description below, um, where you can kind of start getting your brain and mouth, if you will, wrapped around the rhythms of this particular idiomatic style of music, the 6-8. Whether it's a 6-8 march or slow air, they can be a little peculiar. We don't tend to listen to a lot of 6-8 music in our Western popular music, but it's a great rhythm. And it does mean that there are six eighth notes per measure, but we tend to count them as two groups of three. But let's take a look right here at phrase one. We're going to start with a G grace note on low A up to a B, and in this case, low G to A, and then a D throw, which is heading down to a low G, up to a D, down to a C, and up to a D. This is the light D throw more specifically. If you already have a heavy D throw, feel free to use that one. It's beyond the scope of what I want to go over for the beginning basic series here, but uh, a link to the heavy D throw below if you wanted to check that out. But for today, we're going to use the light D throw. So now we're on that D, G grace note to C, up to a D, then the big old cross right here from D, G grace note to E. You're going to be moving just about every finger on the instrument, from D, you're going to lift two on the top, one on the bottom, and then lower to that E position. So lots of fingers to move there. Make sure you got that good and clean. Then we just lift to a simple F. Then a G grace note back to E, one up, both down, making sure they both smack down together and that that E is nice and percussive, not a big bloopy loose grace note, but a nice percussive small one. And then finally to a high A with a sweep of the thumb, the high A doubling. Let's give this a go, but I'm not going to worry about a metronome quite yet. I'm going to make sure that the dotted notes are long, the 16th notes are relatively short, and that dotted eighth at the end, we're going to just float on that guy for quite a long time. Now for phrase two, it's going to start on a half F doubling. That's kind of weird. Where's the G grace note? Well, if you look above, you can see we're actually coming off of a high A right there. So since we're coming off a high A, we can't start with a G grace note, so we're going to head right to that F and play just one G grace note from that high A to the F to start that. And then G grace note down to the E, just like we had done in phrase one, up to another F, then G grace note to a B, and a tar lua to a B. So this one's a little tricky. Video on tar lua is up here if you are having any problems with this embellishment. But to talk about it briefly, we're on B. We're going to head down to low G. Make sure both come down smartly together. Then we're going to separate the low Gs with a D grace note and head back up to another B with an E grace note. And as you do this, again, make sure that E is not a big scoopy noise or motion. From the low G, it should be a nice snug E grace note. and not nothing too big, nice and percussive, nice and clean. 
So B to B Taralua, Chigreso to A, and A Burl. And again, I tend to sweep up and down, but there's any number of styles. There's the seven, there's the tap curl, and a video on how to pick your burl style right up there. I'm actually going to start from the high A before it because that's what's going to happen in the music, and that way I don't have to introduce a new G grace note to the top of this to start that half doubling. Now let's put those two phrases together, phrase one and phrase two. And you would repeat that line to play the first part of the tune. So I have the metronome set here at 120 beats per minute, and I have it set up to emphasize the one and the four beats on the Soundbrenner wearable metronome here. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to be the metronome beat that we're going to be hearing as I play this first line again with the metronome. So that first note's going to be a beat and a half of these subdivided clicks. The second one will be the second half of beat two. Third note will be on beat three. So on and so forth. One, two, three, go, two, three. <laughs> So phrase three is going to start with a full F doubling, two chirpy percussive G grace notes on F, then head down to a D again. Avoid that crossing noise. It's really easy to kind of keep that bottom hand there a little too long and, and have an extra noise in there. We definitely don't want that nice and clean. Then back up to an F and another F doubling on F. Then from there, we'll head down to an E doubling, G grace note on E, F grace note to separate the E into two, down to a B, up again to an E, and then an E double. Let's give it a try. And that's all there is to phrase three. So phrase four is going to start with a, another light D throw in this case. So low G, D, C, D, all real but short notes. G, D, C, D, B, D. So you head down to a B, back up to a D, and then the D doubling. This is probably the first one of these many of you will have run across in the wild. It's not so bad, but it does look a little tricky at first if you're not used to them. So you're on a D in this case, and you'll do a G grace note and an E grace note to separate that D into two. So you're gonna be on a D and then two more Ds, percussive G grace note, E grace note. And then we're going to do a light D tap to separate that D into yet one more D. And that's just a quick percussive motion with the pointer finger only in this case. Then a G grace note to a B and another Taralua to a B. So B, low G, D grace note, E grace note back up to another B. Let's try this whole phrase. Now let's try phrases three and four with the metronome repeated. One, two, three, go, two, three. with that taralua falling just before the beat. Bum, do -do -dum, that E grace note ending on the downbeat. And then for the part one reprise, reprise, I'm not actually sure, I've heard it pronounced both ways. If you know specifically what it is, write down below. But in any case, we're going back to part one. We're gonna start with the same phrase one and phrase two as we did before. 
But if we're going to play it with the more traditional ending, we're going to go back to phrase one in the very last line and then do the alternate final ending of phrase two, which rather than walking down to an A and then a burl, you'll actually walk up with a C to a D throw and then a heavy D strike. So let's try that phrase two final ending. Now, let's try the part one reprise with the final ending. One, two, three, go, two, three. Now, if you wanted to end this the way it does in the show Outlander, you would actually just go at the very end back to the phrase two ending. In Outlander, it actually does end on an A. But with all of the stuff they have going on, it sounds really quite lovely that way. I think on the pipes, it sounds better doing the final ending as is more traditionally played, heading up to that D to really finish it off on just a nice, sweet note. And there was the Skyboat song played on a set of RG Hardy Twist Trap practice pipes right here. But again, I'm not specific about the brand, but I really do implore you. It goes a long way to helping you get ready for the Highland Pipes if you have some sort of instrument like this, be it the Twist Trap pipes, kitchen pipes, any sort of mouth blown small pipe can do the trick and help you get these tunes up and going. For more information on why I think a set of small pipes is so important, there'll be a video linked right up there for you to check out. Well, there you go, everybody. A classic melody with some new bits in there. The D doubling and the B to B Taralua. We hadn't played those yet, not in a tune, just in exercises. So it's a great way to start introducing some more technique to our repertoire. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of the video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. If you wanted to go the extra mile, I also have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way to helping support the channel. And a special shout out to Miss Carrie Tresek, my number one supporter. But you'll see names now of folks scrolling. These are people that contribute monthly to the channel. I'd love to add your name to this list. You often get early access to videos and other perks. So go check out my Patreon. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see down here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise, like this fine hoodie I'm wearing right here, but there's also things like mugs and t-shirts and hats and other things. So go head over to the merch store there and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. Well, thanks again so much for watching everybody. I'm Matt Willis and until next time, cheers. Cheers.